While studying fossils, it is not always clear-cut what the living creature that left these prints once looked like. The 500 million year old Hallucigenia, for instance, had scientists puzzled at first, until they realised they were looking at it upside down. Anomalocarus was once thought to be a sea worm, because at the beginning, the only specimen they had of this creature was one of its mouth appendages. And when they found the first claw belonging to Therizetosaurus, it was once thought to be a rib bone. However, no creature's true appearance has eluded scientists as long as the owner of the curious spiral teeth fossils. The mystery only really being solved as recently as 2013. In 1899, a very unusual fossil was unearthed in Kazakhstan, by a Russian geologist named Alexander Kapinsky. The fossil looked like an ammonite, but made of teeth, teeth similar to that of a shark. After realising it was not an ammonite, Kapinsky correctly thought it was part of a larger fossil and that it belonged to a large prehistoric fish, which he named Helicoprion, meaning spiral saw. He believed the structure extended from its mouth, spiralling from the snout, giving it a very strange appearance. Many different body plans for Helicoprion were proposed over the years after the discovery of the first tooth wall, some believing it was attached to the mouth, but contained within the top jaw, others believe it hung from below the bottom jaw. Many scientists of the period, however, challenged the conclusion that the spiral belonged in the mouth altogether, thinking instead that it was a defensive structure on the body, serving as a deterrent for predators, or maybe it was even used as a weapon, suggesting that it may have been placed on the back of the dorsal fin, or maybe even coming from the tail. As the structure contained teeth, you would think it was a sensible conclusion to assume it may have come from the mouth, but there was another prehistoric shark-like animal known as Stethacanthus that had teeth like objects on top of its head and dorsal fin, so having teeth on the body was not unheard of for other cartilaginous fish. However, none of these theories were really any better substantiated than the other. To add to the mystery, these spiral tooth walls were being discovered all over the world. They had been found throughout North America, Japan, Australia, and China, many of the fossils differentiating in shape and size, showing that these animals were common and diverse in their day. Well over 400 million years ago, the two largest groups of fish diverged from one another, Osteichthys and their sister group Chondrichthys. Osteichthys contains all the fish that had skeletons made of bones, and is the group that we descended from. Chondrichthys, on the other hand, possess skeletons composed entirely of cartilage. This group contains sawfish, rays, and of course sharks. The issue with studying such creatures that died millions of years ago is that their cartilaginous bodies rarely fossilise, but their teeth do. Due to this, you very commonly find prehistoric sharks left with no evidence of their bodies, and there are many species of prehistoric shark only known from their teeth. This phenomena has been the inspiration behind many legends over the years, specifically the teeth of large sharks such as Megalodon. As Megalodon's teeth used to be found with no evidence of the animal that was once attached to them, and the fact they were sometimes located at the top of mountains, meant that people were unable to explain what they were. The conclusion of where they came from was that they were once the tongues of dragons. By the 1960s, there had been discoveries that showed small fragments of cranial cartilage that had been preserved alongside the tooth walls of these animals. A close relation of Helicoprion called Ornithoprion was also discovered around this time. The creature has a large spike coming from its lower jaw as well as a very small tooth wall. Armed with these new discoveries and new evidence, scientists became confident that the structure was placed in the mouth and on the lower jaw. Although none of these discoveries were able to show exactly how the spiral would have looked, so the most common assumption was that it curved downwards to form the spiral, which inspired some of the most famous but incorrect versions of paleo art for this creature. It wasn't until 2013, over a hundred years after the first tooth wall was discovered, that an old specimen was re-examined using newer technology, showing what these fish looked like. The spiral was placed right in the centre of the bottom jaw, further to the back of the mouth, held in place with cartilage on both sides, the upper jaw seeming to have had no teeth. As the creature got older, the teeth spiral would have moved around replacing the old ones, unlike sharks that shed their teeth. The way this creature would have fed, and why it would have needed such a device, is uncertain but it is thought that they didn't eat hard-bodied shelled animals without the help of a top row of teeth, unless it had the shell in place to pull out the animal inside. It most likely fed on soft body prey like squid and other cephalopods. The new 2013 data also showed that Helicoprion were not sharks at all. They were cartilaginous fish, but were actually quite distantly related to sharks. The group Batoidia that contains all the species of ray were more closely related to sharks than Helicoprion was. Helicoprion and their family members are called Eugenodontids, and their closest living relatives are a group of chondrichthys that are rather obscure today, known as chimeras. This group contains animals such as ghost sharks, spookfish, and ratfish. 
So although often depicted as a shark looking creature, it is very plausible that they may have looked more like a ratfish in real life, making a depiction like this more likely. Today, Chimera mostly live in the deep, rarely being found in ecosystems shallower than 200 meters or so. Although this side of the cartilaginous fish family tree seems to be mostly confined to the deeps nowadays, in ancient times they were some of the most successful creatures around, and most likely occupied all sorts of different habitats. Helicoprion were ancient fish, living around 285 to 250 million years ago, long before the dinosaurs in the Permian period. They would have occupied the ancient Panthalassic Ocean. At this time in the Earth's history, all the continents were connected from Pangaea. This left a large superocean on the other side of the world that would have been considerably larger than the Pacific Ocean. As their teeth have been found throughout the world, Helicoprion would have been important and diverse members of many ecosystems. Unfortunately, Helicoprion died out about 250 million years ago during the Permian extinction, or the Great Dying, that was the worst mass extinction ever. This extinction event was bad for land animals, but was absolutely devastating for the ocean-going creatures, killing off other famous prehistoric staples like trilobites. However, their disappearance along with many other sea creatures of the Permian may have been one of the reasons that marine reptiles and sharks were able to rise up, exploiting the empty oceans left behind. A massive thank you goes to Karim, Fozzleworth, and David Vanderroost, and all my other patrons for their support. If you would like to support me as well, then you can go to Patreon and make a pledge, or you can make a single donation. Links are in the description. If you enjoyed the video and would like to be updated with future content, then consider subscribing. Thank you for watching.